Yes, Robbie and Rachel, we're going to go ahead and start our podcast at 7.30 uh, on the dot, hopefully. You know, punctuality and anime fans don't necessarily run uh, in tandem with one another. But uh, please get yourself acquainted. We're just going to be chatting here, and uh, we'll see uh, We'll see what sh- surfaces. But yeah, uh, we're live, but I, I like to call this... It's it's the moment of time before the camera. I, hits I like record. to call this. Ah! It's it's the moment of time before the pre-show. Yeah, the pre-show, the pre-show. And uh, it, if you hit refresh, you will see we are hosting now. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot. Aha! There we go. Aha! So, a side benefit is, since we're moving to Tuesdays, Anthony... That was me. (laughs) That was me. Uh, Anthony (laughs) is free on those days, meaning he could run OBS. So, all I have to do is is host. That's good. I mean, it's good to be able to just focus on the thing that you want to focus on. Mm Mm-hmm. And Anthony's a lot better. I mean, I have rudimentary knowledge of how to get around, but he's the specialist. I don't get all the cool. Uh, I don't get all the cool uh, bonus stats when doing the skill. Uh, I got the I got the window open now. I'm just going to move this over. There we go. Yo, sup Ian? Uh we're in pre-show mode as uh, Rachel has uh said. Oh, I need to get my Patreon up too. Yeah, get that up there. Get that up there. Be prepared to plug things uh by the end of this, Robbie. Roger that. Well, I I usually take care of the Patreon stuff just because I don't believe in having other people do labor when right, yeah. that, that is financially what I, co- what I meant was, Robbie, if you have stuff you want to plug oh, yes. at the end of this, yes, yes, that get that part. prepared. I think I'm good. Okay, cool. But, uh... I mean, the great thing about the current tier of Patreon, the, the current amount of money we're making on Patreon, is that it's paying off the domain hosting for the CWF email accounts. Oh, fantastic. Which, yeah, and it's not an absorbent amount of money, but we didn't m- do this to make an absorbent amount of money. No, we mostly did this to continue doing the thing we're doing. Well, it was also to, t- yes, to continue doing the thing we're doing. That is a good way of saying it. All right, I got the list of patrons up, so we will be taken care of. The fact that we have patrons, period, is a blessing. Yeah, how many do we have now? Uh, we have seven. That's yeah. yeah yo, hey, oh, that's, that's about six more than I expected. That is more. Yeah, I know. Actually, it's uh, you know, six of them are just six other accounts made by me at the one dollar pledge. <laughs> <laughs> Sup, Ian? Again, uh, Ian's in the chat. And uh, obviously, Ian, feel free to chime in on the episode. Uh, he he did watch it from home, so uh, it's great. But oh man, we gotta talk about uh, we gotta talk about the the story today of naming the Queen City show. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. I like how every time we have a new show, I pitch a name. You think it's fucking fantastic. And then somebody it, else comes up with a, with a way better name. Yeah. Immediately, right after you say, oh, yeah, we're going with that. No, wait. No, well, we're going to be that. fair, though, your name set the direction. Oh, yeah, no, like, it's all it's all important, like, conversation. It's just, I just find that funny as a pattern that it keeps happening. I was set on it until Bryce came and just smashed everything. What happens? What happens? At first, I was I thought about naming it like Queen Size, but I was like, "This isn't a mattress." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry if there's a bit of background noise on my end. That's because I'm simultaneously 
making dinner while we're doing this. That's okay. That's okay. Good for I, you. I am going to eat late. It's all right. Intermittent fasting for the win. Uh, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I made a bunch of rice balls last night. Hey, yo, I saw. I saw. Okay. I'm, it's 729, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the logo and we're going to get started, okay? Okie dokie. Oh, and can one of you post in boardroom letting them know that we're live? Uh, the Facebook boardroom? Or I mean, the general, the, chat? the general chat. Yeah, okay. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. My name is Gerardo Paz, and welcome to a special Tuesday episode of CWF Backstage Pass. Uh, I first want to start off with an announcement. Uh, due to scheduling conflicts, we will now be moving CWF Backstage Pass to Tuesdays, which, if you think about it, kind of works out in our favor, given most weekends are on run to Monday, or Mondays were very tired, or three-day weekends, so this will allow us to have a more consistent schedule. Uh, so, you know, mark your calendars, the first and third Tuesday of every month, hopefully, if we all, uh, you know, as the planets align, we will be hosting our episodes. Now, today is a very special episode, as we have a new and returning guest on the show. So, uh, why don't you introduce yourselves? Who goes first? I think that's you since you spoke first. Oh, shit. Yeah, okay. Uh, hello, this is Rachel. Um, I was on a previous episode. I'm uh, in CWF. I'm Pikachu Libre and Heather Mason and a couple of other people that we don't uh, really talk about. Um, <laughs> I am also a wrestling announcer in my free time. And uh, that that's pretty much... Pretty much the uh, the deal with Rachel. Yeah, always good to have you back. Uh, Rachel's always been a staple in the CWF community, uh, especially one of our very first uh, uh, female competitors, which that club has grown to by like what five people now. Uh, something like that. At least uh, regular competitors. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, yo, yo. We welcome. We welcome everybody. We love variety in the CWF. So we take. We we will take. The doors are open. <laughs> Yeah, precisely. And now our new competitor, not but not new to the CWF, but I mean new to Backstage Pass, but not new to podcasting with us. Why don't you introduce yourself to the team? Hey there, I'm Robbie. Uh, those of you who've been watching CWF will probably recognize me as the Cyclist of Justice, Moomin Rider. But more, uh, more pressingly, we'll be talking about my recent showing as Giovanni at Sack Anime. I've been in the CWF for a number of years at this point. I've done quite a few characters aside from those two, um, Trunks, Phil Nye, and a few one-shots. Yeah, uh, and uh, fun fact, Robbie was the person with us for the Quality Goods podcast, which we recorded a few weeks ago right before Fanime. So uh, his song and dance has been shared, but we'll definitely go over it again. Now... Once again, as any good episode of Backstage Passes, we will always, well not always, we highly encourage, I think that's the better term, highly encourage comments and questions posted in our chat, which we like to call the green room. If you want to contribute to the conversation or ask us something, please write your question here and we'll be sure to read them over the air. With that said, let's go ahead and answer last episode's question. Uh, Rachel, did you, did you hear the question last time? I am so behind. Okay, so really that's bad. that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, I think it's a good question. What is your favorite type of heel? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, Robbie, do you want to start off? Ooh, all right. So I guess I'm going to go a little further than just, you know, wrestling heels and talk about villainous characters in general because it's the same kind of concept that you can bring you know to and from you know, wrestling into any other form of media there's two kinds of villains that i particularly enjoy there's the kind that believes that what they are doing is right the kind that you know thinks that they are 
doing what is important, even if other people consider them evil, which is all well and good. We see plenty of that. But honestly, I really like the kind that just embraces being evil every now and then. So evil for the sake of evil. Because it's fun. So like Joker? Uh, not necessarily Joker. Joker okay. is more antagonizing Batman because, you know, he is insane and evil. But uh, Wait. I- I'm thinking more, um... Dio? Icon from Order of the Stick. Yes, Dio as well. Dio Brando, so okay. And Dio. Okay. Their, their, their motivation is, it's fun, F you. Exactly. Uh, GG Professor writes, Monster heals for sheer. They're fun to watch go on a rampage, and then it's exciting when a face finally manages to take them down. Uh, monster heels, for those who haven't heard of the term, are villainous wrestlers that are booked incredibly strong and dangerous. So like Kane when he first came out or when Big Show first debuted where they just destroy people and seem invincible. So when, when the face finally fights him back, like, oh my god, it's, it's, it's David and Goliath. It's ultimately David and Goliath. Uh, Rachel, do you have an answer? Or you want more time to think? No, I actually thought it, I, I came up with my answer immediately. Um, co- I love comedy heels. Um, and that's a really, it's kind of a broad topic, but a- almost any heel can be a comedy heel on any given night. Um, I'm mostly... When, when I heard that question, I'm just like, oh, who do I work with that I really like to see doing heel stuff? Um, there's a couple of guys from uh, Oregon, Four Minutes of Heat, uh, in particular that I'm thinking of right now, Ricky Gibson, Eddie Pearl, and Billy Pearl. Um, I don't think they're together. Necess- I think Eddie and Ricky are still doing the uh, Four Minutes of Heat thing, but um, just... <laughs> mm-hmm. Ricky does this one spot where he... Uh, is going to jump up onto the second rope and, like, jump onto somebody, except he purposefully slips and then crotches himself <laughs> on the second rope. So is, is this, like, like... So kind of like what Chuck Taylor does. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a hoist by my own petard, oh God! <laughs> so when we, when we say comedy heels, so you just mean broadly a heel that make you that can make you laugh. Yeah, you, you, you're comfortable booing them, but you're also going to laugh at them rather than with them. Mm, I see. So like, so like, um, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. Oh, Daniel has a good one. Uh, lol, I think comedic heel, I think Santino Morella. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that sort of thing. And even like the Miz will count and we love and respect the Miz in this house, as I said on the last <laughs> podcast that I was on. Um, when just like, sometimes the facial expressions he makes when, uh, when he's being called out for his bullshit is just like, oh, God, that is the funniest thing. All right. So my answer is actually very similar to Robbie's um, in that my favorite type of heel is the delusional heel. Mm. So the heel that it's pretty much in wrestling specifically is the heel that does all the baby face things, but you don't like him. So... Uh, like when Kurt Angle debuted, he was like he was he he was the embodiment of the all American hero, but he was a jerk, so we hated him, and I love that. Uh, in fact, that's how I play Matt Ishida, where Matt Ishida sees himself as the hero. So every time he loses, it's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna fight from the bottom because I'm a hero, and that's what I do. But we all hate Matt Ishida. I hate Matt Ishida. Matt Ishida's a jerk. Uh, <laughs> I, we love to hate him. We love to hate him, and I don't know how I could resist the urge to punch myself in the face when I'm him. But I, I just love having, I just love having that bent perspective. You know what I mean? They do everything right, but they get it at the wrong way. Yeah, like uh, let's see. Um... Kaito Aida, who is Ian CM Puff in the chat, says, The heel you're meant to hate, but you love. Kevin Owens is the best example. I just can't hate him because all he does is make valid points. Yeah, and ultimately he fights for his family, which is a very good thing to do. But he yeah. he does the worst things possible, like powerbomb people onto aprons. Exactly. It's like, 
oh, you're you're making a good point, but I hate the way it, that you're making. Uh, it. That it, that's classic wrestling training one hundred and one. We lo- we lo- agree with what you say, but we hate how you said it. Exactly. Uh, another example I think uh, is New Day when the New Day turned heel. They cheated, but they said, we won because of the power of positivity, and we're a positive force. I'm like, this is, this is amazing because they're blatantly cheating, but they just say, because we believe in ourselves. Mm-hmm. All right. Good talk. Good talk. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good answer. Now, uh, this last, last week, two weeks, two weeks, right? I think two weeks. Two weeks ago. We had a tremendous show at CWF Explosion, CWF and SPW Explosion, which was done at SAC Anime. It was probably one of our most challenging shows, uh, no, in particular because of the time frame. We had only two weeks to recover from Fanime, and then we had to put together a not only a show, but a hyper-integrated show with SPW. So it was different from our normal CWF format, which, spoiler alert, is not predetermined. Uh, well, at least for the heavyweight belt. But now we had to be in, we were in scripted segments with predetermined r- winners and predetermined losers intermixed with SPW matches. And we had to make this all flow. It was by far, I'd say, one of our most challenging shows. Is that safe to say? I think so, and it was also, we had to keep it under two and a half hours. Yeah, it's... yeah, a lot of balls in the air to juggle, but I, I think we pulled it off. Oh, I have no doubt that we pulled it off. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's it's this sort of situation that makes us think about, like, well, we, we know that our show is similar to wrestling, but it really emphasizes the way that it's different from wrestling. But at the same time, we have to keep the vibe of wrestling. <laughs> Exactly. And and the hardest challenges, especially with these integrated shows, is that how do we get ourselves over when we can't wrest when we don't wrestle? I think the most important part is just making sure that everybody can hear us. <laughs> yeah. So this episode of Backstage Pass is not specifically focusing on what's going on in wrestling, though AEW pulled on an amazing show with Double or Nothing. Uh, instead, this is mainly to talk about the SAC anime show and SAC anime in general, because SAC anime is, it's its own microcosm in the convention world, a microcosm that the three of us are very familiar with. Yeah, we've, I've been going for several years. Um, I'm pretty sure you two have been going way longer than me. Actually, no, I have almost- I have lost count of how many years I've been going- it's it's quite the show because most of the you know the NorCal shows are in the same area, and then Sac Anime you got to drive two hours up and two hours down, and you get in the yeah, heat. You do. Yeah, well, we do, we do, not Rachel. <laughs> what, what's what's funny is that we we yeah. somehow combined uh, the people in this podcast to just like who was hanging out at Rachel's house that week. Yeah, uh, uh, Robbie and I had the pleasure of uh, spending the night at Rachel's house uh, with Jack. Uh, it was a great time. Talked a lot about uh, Jewish stories, such as Herschel and the Hanukkah Goblins. <laughs> Are you accurately described as Jewish Constantine. Yeah, Jewish Constantine. Uh, For context, if you don't know, uh, Herschel and the Hob- Hanukkah Goblins is a children's book about a guy who wants to celebrate Hanukkah, but the synagogue is haunted by goblins. Yeah. And he's got he's to gotta outwit all of them if he wants to uh, continue lighting the candles for eight nights. Yeah, it's basically a gauntlet match. <laughs> it, eight yeah, nights, it's... eight goblins, one survivor. Who will blow out the last candle? With, with beautiful artwork, just amazing. Yeah, if you, um, yeah, look at that. Children's literature recommendations. Hey, if you have a chance, go ahead and like find Herschel at the Hanukkah Goblins at, at your local library. <laughs> it's probably there. It's got one of those big silver stickers so you know it's good, which it is. <laughs> that's, that's like the Nintendo seal of quality. Oh my god, you're right. Uh, but... I mean, you know, Robbie and I can't really complain about the drive because, Rachel, you make that drive down for us for all our shows every every other time. So this is kind of like the shoes on the other foot. 
uh, yeah, uh, I've been making towns for a little bit, so, uh, you know, a two-hour drive is not so bad every now and then. Yeah, when I was up in uh, the North Bay, it was basically a two-hour drive if I want to go to a Bay Area convention, two-hour drive if I want to go to a Sacramento convention, two-hour drive if I want to do anything that isn't being in that general area. So, I just wanted to start in general about SAC anime. How, how did you feel about the con? Oh, it, it, okay, so having been to a bunch of SAC animes, it was weird because it was at a different time than it usually is. And if you're not familiar with what's happening, uh, Sacramento Convention Center is going to go under for renovations very soon. And so SAC anime decided we're going to run our show in June instead of September. Because they run two shows a year, and it's usually January and September or the end of August. This time it was in June. And so there weren't quite as many people as usual, but I think that's just because, like, you know, people weren't prepared to go to another big con in June. Yeah, I feel like the proximity to Fanime definitely impacted attendance. But, you know, if you've been to SAC Anime, you know what to expect. They've got a lot of really good guests that they bring in consistently. Um, they've got a variety of programming. And it's generally a uh, fine location for hanging out and getting photo shoots. Yeah, I always saw SAC Anime as the booster shot for your con fix. Like, it's, it's usually after AX. And, you know, sometimes you just want to weeb it out. In, a, in, a, in an immersive setting and you don't want to dress up and walk to your local mall so you go to SAC Anime. But that it, and like, it, it's, it's just a, it's a hub for like a lot of my friends. Um, if this is, this is my hangout con. This is where I see a lot of people that I haven't seen in a, in a little bit, not necessarily people from out of state, but just like people that I haven't connected with in a while. And um it's also the place where i just do most of my karaoke um i cannot emphasize enough how much i love sack anime karaoke room i always spend my sundays in there the the team that runs it is amazing and it's just such a great vibe because you could be doing like um and i'll give an example like there's this guy who didn't know the song very well was uh sort of pronouncing everything very phonetically and was entirely off beat and everybody in that room was like yeah yeah just like chant like cheering for him and clapping like it's it's just the best uh yeah uh second anime's karaoke room is run very well it was my first time seeing it this year but i really liked how they got they didn't settle on generic blue background text scrolling they got some of them had the more popular ones had full on videos like actual karaoke uh yeah and i should add um if if you go there often enough they'll remember you and if you've got a favorite song they might throw a little bit of like flair on the uh the background video for one of them like one of my one of my big showstoppers at anime karaoke is always okusenmon and they put like little uh animations of like okusenmon okusenmon and that just made me really happy. I just really enjoyed doing the poke rap at karaoke. Mm -hmm. Speaking of karaoke, this is just a little road story. I uh, Robbie was uh, very generous enough to drive myself and Jericho up to Sack Anime up and down. And Robbie's way of keeping himself entertained is that he has a karaoke challenge CD, which okay. is... A CD fooled with, you know, by consensus, one of the more difficult songs in karaoke, like One Week, or, uh... Like, it's the end of the world as we know the it. End of, real time. Yes. Oh so this is basically Robbie's hyperbolic time chamber of karaoke music, is his car. I, I have to experience that someday. That, that sounds amazing. Like, I, I feel like the, Robbie's karaoke CD is like the... Uh, karaoke aerobics like okay now here comes a fast song and now here's a slow song and now here's a here's a ballad talky song like you you get you and get here's rockapella yeah rockapella like you get the full karaoke spectrum 
that that seems appropriate given Robbie that you run uh, a gong show panel at a lot of cons you go to. Yeah, I mean the CD is basically the songs that are the most irresistible for singing along with. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well, yeah, bet you weren't expect. I've also got Queen's greatest greatest hits, but as we all know, any CD left in a car long enough will eventually become Queen's greatest hits. <laughs> It's true. Yep, yep, yep. This is how we're going to open the podcast, talking about Herschel and the Hanukkah Goblins along with karaoke. Yes, this is why. good omens reference. Good omens reference. This is why you subscribe to the CWF network. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and talk about the show. Again, probably our most challenging show, which had a lot of us doing things out of our comfort level. And uh, for those of you at home who haven't watched the show... Please do. It is on the CWF network. Go to our Twitch page, click videos, and watch CWF Sack Anime. It's probably our best show, just in fact of the qu- of the audio quality alone. Audio is way better this episode. You can actually hear us. It's worth it just for. Th- yeah. Now, now, Robbie and Rachel, you two had a special grudge match. Can you? Oh, did we ever? Can we? Uh, can you? You know, cue people in what happened and your thoughts going into it, especially after the last sack anime when it started. Because this is well, this, this is really all Rachel's story, so I, I think she should take it. Okay, I'll I'll start. Um, uh, it, it's funny that we call it my story when it's just like I I make excuses to work with people that I haven't gotten a chance to do a lot of work with in the past um you know i guess it it is pikachu libre's story in general but i you know the 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 way that i talked about um what i like to do in wrestling in the last podcast i was on um i just like to tell stories and so in seeing who else was available and who what everybody else was doing i'm just like all right I think I want to take a beat down and make this happen for myself because this was this was in the works for a good long while actually. Um at least we, 6 months at least. Actually even more than that because ever since Pikachu Libre won the belt um I had like these ideas uh with Isaac that Giovanni was going to uh come along and, and make trouble. Um, he His Giovanni plans didn't end up panning out. Um, so with his blessing, I talked to Robbie because I know he is a Giovanni cosplayer and has been for a while. I'm just like, you think we could make it work with this? And so, you know, I'm pitching it to other people. And um, long story short, I got my friend, a wrestler, Eliza Hammer, to dress up like a rocket and beat the hell out of me. Um, at the uh, the prior sack anime show, um, and then this time we did our our blow off for uh, that storyline. Yeah. And on my end, oh, go on. Oh no, I just like to say that Giovanni has a very interesting history in CWF. Uh, outside of Dan Habiki, he is the same character played by two different people, but more so that he's played by two different people in the same division <laughs> so uh, yes the same the same uh area the same area i just wanted to throw that tidbit out before you spoke robbie yeah but yeah isaac gave me the go ahead for taking over as giovanni that was a character that i'd been contemplating doing you know uh even before he uh claimed it and of course when he did it was like you know okay no it's yours you you got this now i'm fully behind you uh you want one of the rocket patches i got some here Take it, you know, because we support each other in the CWF. Oh, do we ever, which is why you should join us if you ever even have an inkling of interest of performing. Please sign up. We'll take care of you. This has been a public service announcement by Gerardo Paz. <laughs> uh, but but uh, when Rachel asked if I wanted to help out with uh, Pikachu Libre storyline, I was you know totally on board. It's like, yes, no, let's do this and let's get that grudge match going let's set up that rivalry 
uh, the timing was really good as well because I just basically wrapped up Trunks' storyline, which just happened as it happened. Uh, you know, first the crowd was chanting Princess Trunks and he was a little resistant, so back next show fully embracing the title with the crown and everything. So that brought his story to a good uh, resting point, so it seemed a perfect time to bring Giovanni on board and start kicking that off. And that was a lot of fun being a part of, you know, being able to first do the beatdown and then get beat down myself. <laughs> when we were doing the, you know, onstage part for this last show, you know, I wanted to use a little bit of you know, action up there. At first I suggested um, I could get thrown, but Rachel wanted to do the uh, Volt Tackle Hug, which was a great finisher, of course. So oh, because we had uh, Lucario and Incineroar coming on, I thought, okay, I can, you know, take one of them down with just a you know, basic little uh, throw thing. And Mark was totally willing to take the bump, and he did a fantastic job you know, selling it and going with it. And it just added a lot more to you know, the danger threat that Giovanni presented when he was up there. It's like, yeah, outnumbered, but still one down, two to go right before the finish. And just that, you know, volt tackle hug was fantastic. And as I was falling, I thought, well, I've practiced catching myself for some falls, but if I really want to sell this, I should probably just land on my face. The floor is soft enough. Let's do this. Mind you, that all took place in about two seconds. So yeah, I landed on my face and it was awesome. Yeah, you. It looked really good. It looked really good. Like that, that it was real. That was a that was a wrestler quality bump. I'm just gonna say, like to flop like that. Like I could flop like that standing, but I put my hand up and it's very subtle. You didn't, and you didn't get hurt. So mm, a plus. It's true. Uh, I I you know, I've taken martial arts before, so. I know how to take a fall. It just had been a while. So let's go ahead and talk about the construction of the show because the segment had a lot of a lot of there were a lot of segments in it. You had the Pikachu Libre promo, then you had Giovanni enter, uh, Rocket Grunt, uh, the the shirt bit, the the reinforcements, the Incineroar toss, and then finally the takedown. Uh, Mm, for reference, I was involved in this as an overseer. Oh, hello, Jez and So Board Melee, right? CWF, CWF, hello, thank you. And Daniel555 says, and both Giovannis were the finalists of the boat show. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Another interesting bit of trivia. We had two shows on the USS Hornet. Both of them had Giovanni in the final, and Giovanni was played by a different performer. Anyway, uh... I was more of the overseer, and I I gotta admit I didn't really have a lot to play in this. Really, I was just there like, please, I was just please for the love of Christ, be safe, please be safe, please be safe, please be safe. <laughs> uh, that that was that was my bit. Everything else was Rachel from teach instructing people how to get in the ring without steps. We, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To the overall construction. Uh, it was all it was all them. I think the most input I had was okay. I I, I got to tell this story. Was Robbie's original fall? <laughs> <laughs> that thing was not very good. That thing was faker than a Disney facade. I mean, to to be fair, I was practicing on a hard so. Yeah. I was trying to be a little safe with the practice. Oh yeah, like, yeah. No, it, it was a lousy fall. It it, it wasn't the fall wasn't bad. Not because of it wasn't bad because of how he fell. The reason why the fall was bad was the logic of the fall, because uh, Robbie Robbie had it where he would you know fall down on his knees and then wait a bit, and originally he would just fall and land perfectly spread eagle. And I looked at it like nobody falls like that. <laughs> Nobody falls like that. Come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> that was one of many practice falls. That was one of many practice falls, which, to be fair, we would rather have a fall that looks fake than, and is safe than a realistic fall that is dangerous. Yeah, that was the fall that we were practicing for, like, convenience purposes. We're just like, okay, so just to make it quicker to uh, get you into a, a pin position, just you can do that. But, you know, 
which was then I came in for like, why don't you fall forward? That way Pikachu can move your dead weight over, which really shows how knocked out you are. Yeah. Yeah, initially I was thinking, okay, I'd fall forward and then they'll just, you know, do the 10 count since I'm on the ground. Maybe I'd struggle to get up. But, you know, Rachel wanted me to just be passed out. So then I was trying to practice the falls. I was like, okay, fall to the knees, no problem. Fall to the floor, crap, this floor is hard. So I was trying some different things, falling, flopping to the side, falling back. But in the end, we were going to go with, you know, just trying to catch myself a little bit as I wasn't trying to make it look fake but still safe and in the end yeah like i said face plant face plant soft floors made it possible yeah the uh I, I i like to tell people it's you know the a ring is not as soft as you'd think for uh bumping um for people who have to keep doing it over and over again but it is better than a floor way better oh in- infinitely so way yeah. better uh just just you know people Watching wrestling really underestimate the dangers of a classic back bump. Just a simple flat back bump. And how when you do a lot of them, it just racks up on your body, like the damage. Yeah, and can you believe they're still not giving them health care in the biggest company that exists in wrestling? Hey, we talked about this a few episodes too. Yep, yep, it stinks. And they still don't have it. They still don't have it. Unfortunately, AEW doesn't have it either, outside of like a few select wrestlers. Yeah. <laughs> Support healthcare people. Seriously. Yeah. And if you haven't watched John Oliver's bit on last week covering the topic, you should. It's very powerful. Yeah, I mean, if we, if literally, if healthcare was universal, it wouldn't be as much of a problem. But, you know. Yep, Kaito, uh, Kaito writes healthcare for all. Yes. Yes. Everybody. That, everybody. Everyone, please. Every single buddy. Helps everyone. Uh, Rachel. Yes. So let's talk about Incineroar and Lu- Lucario's inclusion. Okay. So, you know, this was uh, – what, what motivated you to have this uh, – to, to – have friends come in as opposed to kind of like a one v all situation um well this also has started way longer way longer ago than you'd think which is may not maybe not correct grammar but i don't care uh yes i do have a degree in english which means i can break the rules um i was talking with mark who was our guzma um, way back when he and I have, like, ridiculous, like, ring chemistry for this thing. He and I just, like, play off each other so well, so I, I try to work with him whenever I can. Um, the storyline I had with Guzma was just, like, it, it made me so happy how well that went off. Um, and so we, you know, after Guzma was defeated, uh, He's, I guess, maybe retired for I don't know if Mark ever plans to bring him back, but we were talking about how we can continue to work together. And he said, oh, I could do Incineroar, and we could be a tag team. And I thought, yeah, we could. And then, you know, like a, a year or so passed uh, between that time where we didn't really have the, the uh, timer ability to get that together. Um, and... Then I started doing this Giovanni storyline, and I thought, how can I make this, like, way bigger for the next one? And, you know, I thought about maybe bringing in some wrestlers that I knew from SPW, but I thought what would be way cooler is if we could come up with a stable of Pokemon wrestlers to take down Giovanni together. Um, and obviously Mark came to mind immediately because he was doing Incineroar and he was already like putting that together for Fanime. Um, so I thought, all right, we're going to, we're going to do that definitely. But like, you know, it's a good round number three. And so I thought, um, uh, I don't exactly recall how it came to be that, um, Rico got involved other than Rico is my friend and he's cool. Um, and I think... I think he was also just like, hey, this is what I was thinking for something. And I said, 
hey Rico, you want to get involved in this thing? And so it, it just so happened that he thought about doing Lucario. And all of these Pokemon are in Smash. So I thought, all right, we're going to be a stable. We're going to be called the Smash because we're all Pokemon in Super Smash Brothers. Right. Um, and so I sort of got everybody into a group chat, in, Robbie included. And I said, hey, everybody, this is what I have planned. Does this sound cool to you? And eventually we got some uh, rocket grunts together as well. One being uh, Robbie and I have a mutual friend, Dakota, um, who has been a part of like several of my uh, CWF entries, but never on his own. I, I he's um, he really loves the show and he likes to support it. So if I need an audience plant, if I need an, uh, a manager or a valet, like. You, I used to go to him pretty much exclusively. He was, um, just to give examples, he was my Alphys when I was Metaton. He was involved in Pikachu Libre's first uh, promo, actually, as a Pokemon Go trainer who tried to catch me and got an ankle lock uh, in reward. <laughs> um, so he was one of their Rocket Grunts. Um, our other Rocket Grunt was Devro, who had this very cute outfit. So we had like a masculine Rocket Grunt. We had a feminine rocket grunt it was just a really good balance that I think. that rocket grunt was also in the uh, giovanni bandy keith video yes she was yeah, and she did a fantastic job just using her expressions to display all the emotions that giovanni can't because he's got to be super serious yeah she, she added a lot to it she took direction very well <laughs> Both of our grunts did, actually. Mm -hmm. like, oh, yes. I, I am so grateful that we had both of them as grunts. They were fantastic. Yeah, uh, they, they both took direction very well. And, and Code has always been, like, good with it. It's just, like, he really got to um, go a little bit nuts with it. Um, <laughs> just like, yeah, the boss! Yeah, our boss is cool! All right, yeah! Just, like, doing a bunch of hand gestures and then Naruto running away from the ring. It's... Although, speaking of grunts and the Anything Goes belt, a uh, funny story about the uh, Giovanni versus Mario Anything Goes match. Mm. Uh, while Jeremy and I were going to, you know, set up and film and, you know, uh, practicing what we were going to do, uh, we ran into, you know, two other Team Rocket cosplayers. And, you know, whenever I'm Giovanni, I like to do a little in-character banter, you know, just something like, Agents, have you caught that blasted Pikachu yet? <laughs> no? Well, then get back to work. I don't pay you to stand around. <laughs> and, you know, these guys were totally playing along. They were having a lot of fun with it. And I said, all right, what's your grunt number? And he gave me this you know, incredibly long, uh, complicated number code. And it's like, all right, 9-7, you said. I know. Well, you're 9-8 now. You just got demoted. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I explained that we were about to film a video. If they wanted to you know, help out, just kind of flank me and be, you know, my backup grunts. And they were totally in for that, and you only see them for like a second, but they were standing behind me the entire time, just arms crossed, nodding seriously, you know, as I was uh, you know, going through the bit. So that was a uh, fortuitous thing, but really good timing that worked out quite nicely. And if you guys are watching this at any point, thank you once again for being there at just the right time. Also for anybody watching this, uh... Please, if you haven't, go to our Facebook page and click the video tab because the saga of the Anything Goes title has continued to sack anime. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like we need to um, do better at advertising that because everybody comes up with the most hilarious stuff for it. And the videos are usually just pretty short. You can consume them in a pretty short amount of time and you get to see interactions that you wouldn't normally see just from a logistics standpoint in CWF, um, everyone's just so goddamn creative with it. And I still definitely want to see a compilation showing the journey through each convention. Yeah, Anthony says he's working on that. Oh, fantastic. Uh, fantastic. But I, I do agree. The, the videos have actually been getting a surprisingly good, like a high number of people reached. So oh, good. people are watching them. And if you haven't, uh, please do so. I think yeah, Sack Anime has managed to sustain the level of crazy that Fanime has had. 
there's there's even a mini time travel storyline. <laughs> yeah, we we have Giovanni versus Mario in a Pokemon battle. Shaggy using his detective skills against Bandit Keith. Uh, Trunks cheating with time travel, and Matushita with one of the very few in uh, recorded wins of his career. All of those were so much fun to do. I think the biggest challenge was just just to find different p- parts of the convention to shoot at, just because we didn't want it to look like it was in the same spot. Yeah. Oh, should we t- uh, should we tell them about the uh, the cursed attempts at doing the Giovanni versus Bandit Keith videos? Oh, <laughs> please do. I yeah. wasn't witness to a lot of this because I was watching everybody's stuff in the game room. All right, so as we were trying to film those, you know, there was just something going wrong every now and then that would make us you know, have to reshoot. Like at, at one point, um, you know, just minor things like a flub line. On Bandit Cle- Keith's uh, sunglasses, but he accidentally drops them, so we have to try that again. You know, we're blocking the doorway, or people walk right past us. But the most hilarious one was when we were filming and we were doing a good job we were getting a nice video and then this random guy comes out of the gaming hall and he goes hey bandit keith if you're such a champion then why did joey beat you and we're just kind of standing there like do we go with this or do we cut (laughs) yeah so we hear hey bandit keith we hear that and i was like okay whatever no and then the person walks in the middle of the frame still talking to him, and I'm holding the camera. And at that point, I had to cut it. I was like, yo, this is too much. Hey, yo, uh, like, yo, bro, we're filming. Uh, get your bid in now. Sorry if I sound like a jerk. Because it was a really good take. It was a really good take. It was, but the end result was still also very good. Yeah, at that point, we moved on to the collectible card game room, and that's the banner appropriately enough since that's where bandit keith emerged from well we had to move because they were doing a tournament in the traditional games room and we had to move all of our shit <laughs> and i'm just like hey everyone's like hey everybody sorry uh we kind of have to move our stuff now also uh shout outs to rachel because she made the wonderful anything goes belt oh thank you uh and really it looks fantastic how... oh thank you i'm really proud of how it turned out like i didn't set out to make like Something that looks like it was from Banjo Kazooie, but it, it ended up being like that. And I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Banjo Kazooie. And I'm not saying that this caused Nintendo to add Banjo Kazooie to Smash, but I'm saying I, I I may have spoken part of it into existence. By the way, you notice an uh, interesting side benefit of the Anything Goes Belt was? Mm. We learned that it looked really good on Shaggy. It looks yeah. really good with Shaggy. Uh, Kaito Ida, Ian says, Banjo-Kazooie for CWF Tag Champs. Just you wait, Ian. Just you wait. Magwes? Maybe Magwes. Well, I don't know. I don't know if we're bringing the tag belts to Magwes, so... Uh... Uh, I, it's all up to all up to the tag champs i don't think we need to but yeah, i do looking. want the anything goes title at mag west a 24-hour con with that much space yes oh, oh absolutely i forgot it was 24 hours yes oh man that's gonna be fun we're just gonna be playing channel a like playing games together filming all these videos Go- we have like more than we had for sec anime just from the amount of like free time we'll have Sack Anime had six, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, no, wait, eight, uh, seven. Seven. Seven, okay. Um, anyway, I was just... Uh, J- Jack is in the room at the moment, uh, just sort of chilling, but we're planning a Banjo-Kazooie cosplay because why the hell not? We don't do enough couples cosplays. And we're just thinking about, like, well, maybe we could be a tag team. Maybe maybe we could at some point. We'll, we'll keep it on the back burner. Uh, so, overall, um, just, Robbie, uh, Rachel, did you, ca- there, there are two other matches we should talk about. Mm. Uh, one is Sailor Moon versus Matushita, but before we get to that, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the tag match with Phoenix Wright, Mario, 
Scoot Robinson and Patrick Fitzpatrick. Yes. Um, the fun thing about Sack Anime was I got to enter three times, three separate times. Uh, once with Scott Armstrong, the uh, panel master. I don't know his official title. I think I'm just gonna head of panels. Master. Head of panels. Yeah, exactly. The 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 czar of panels, and um, wants to do my grudge match, and then it, again as guest announcer as Pikachu Libre. Um, I I do. Uh, I, I am part of a two-person team at Supreme Pro Wrestling right now who does the all of the announcing and hosting duties for all of our shows, uh, along with my broadcast colleague, Gary Supreme, who did most of uh, the SAC anime show, along with along with uh, Donovan Troy for part of it. Um, and so it, it's fun because I've gotten into a comfortable place with announcing recently. I feel like I'm hitting a stride. And then I realize, oh, I have to announce in character now. Huh. <laughs> um, and so it, it wasn't all that different. It was mostly just like putting a little bit more uh, perkiness into there. Because Pikachu Libre is just like a, a, a touch perkier and peppier than i am on any given day um a touch just, just a tad just a little bit just, just a little tad. tad turning ourselves up to 11 turn turn the jolt cola down a little bit <laughs> eh, oh, eh. oh i'm back in high school everything hurts uh so um and then the match starts and like robbie did you get a chance to watch it by the way oh absolutely no i i made sure that i was there to see Okay, yeah. Sometimes I get a little bit lost in watching matches because as a ring announcer and bell ringer, I have to pay attention to what's happening without, like, actually taking in what's happening because I have to pay most attention to the ref. Um, but some of those spots were, like, ridiculous. And let me shout out to uh, Matthew, Peyton, and uh, M Madeline? Was it Madeline? God. What's I, Peyton's sister's name? <laughs> time to stealthily go to Facebook and check the shared friends list. Madison, that's the one. Yeah, Madel Madeline is my sister's name. Madison, thank you. Thank you, Black Freight. Uh, yes, um, shout out to uh, the Mario family. They pulled it out for this. Uh, uh, Peach and Daisy were just like, they held their arms out, like, linked together for, like, a clothesline against Phoenix Wright. Um, that was excellent. That was a great hit right there. I uh, would... All of... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just remember when, I think, was it either, was it Scoot or Phoenix who went for a chop and they hit the wall? Oh, goodness. I don't remember. Because... I'll have to watch it again. But... I, I, uh, I had a unique perspective because Ellie and I were at the Unlock table doing commentary for the match with Chris, who was in charge of Unlock, and we were in character. So, like, we had to, like, keep uh, keep the storyline going because I just lost to... Uh, Matt just lost to Sailor Moon, and how do we act cordial around each other? Without wanting to kill each other, oh, the storyline is Matt is really injured, so he's not going to pick a fight. Right. But it was great. I got to I got to be my uh, I got to you know dig deep into the the the, the wells of uh, of Jesse Ventura and all the other heel commentators and just you know put over the bad people without making the good people look bad. Yeah, and that's a that's a fine balance right there. It's a very fine uh, balance. Uh, yeah. So anyway, shout out to Matthew who uh, was Beowulf in uh, what I don't remember what con. But he was Beowulf at ALA. At ALA, who was Luigi? From I mean, I, I, AX, AX. He was Beowulf at AX. AX. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I think and also ALA. Yeah. The the southern ones. Oh, either one of the southern ones, but either way, like. All of them were on point the entire time. They just did not break character at all. They were constantly on everything. Um, and I talked to the twins afterwards. I'm like, have you have you done a wrestling show before? And they said they hadn't, but they go to a lot of wrestling shows. They cosplay as the Young Bucks. I know. It's, it's adorable. It's adorable. Um, 
it's so cute. Uh, and I'm just like, you guys did a great job. Um, yeah, um, managing uh, a wrestler is a bigger job than a lot of people think about um, because you have to constantly be on your game or it doesn't work. And all three of them like banged it out for that. And, you know, we can't talk about this match without talking about the incredible amount of work rate that Jeremy and Alex put in, in addition to Patrick's and Scooch, which there there was a lot more continuous wrestling because this was, it was tornado tag before they had a tag match. So, you know, each one of them could sit out a little bit, but this time they were always wrestling and it was crazy. Jeremy did a powerbomb. He did a freaking powerbomb. Yeah, he did that. To be he fair, Alex is, Alex is not a, a heavy person, but, like, that still takes a lot of work to, to do as well as he did. And, of course, we can't ignore Skeletor. Oh, my God. All, All right. right, do we spill the behind-the-scenes secrets there or leave it a mystery? Uh, I mean, people talk about La Parca, so let's go ahead. I, I think this is a too great... Uh, a story this is too good of a story yeah so uh one of our announcers and hosts for the cwf segments was tommy wrestling ryan uh tommy was so played by ryan thank you for the quick clap um i i just think ryan is so hilarious all the time as tommy and so oh my gosh uh before you continue i loved i loved how he would he was the ring announcer as Tommy, so he would say instead of one fall, he said one faint. Yes, he he asked me that beforehand. He's just like, "What if I said it as one faint?" And I'm like, "It's brilliant. That's what I think." <laughs> um, and he gets so in character, and it is just the best. He is the best. Um, and I and I say that a lot about a lot of people. So I think. Speaking of. My- Speaking of long-term plans, this is some, uh, we pulled some Keikaku Dory level shit with this one, okay? Yeah. This one had been in the works for a while. This one has been in the works where Daniel, who plays Skeletor, was, was, was requested to be at SAC Anime, and he had SAC Anime in the books, right? However... The Kingdom Hearts concert was playing in his area the same weekend, and he was torn. And we all said, "You don't say no to Kingdom Hearts musicals." You you go to that shit. You go to you that. Go to that shit. And you never let go. You go. You go. Grab it. Grab it like the Keyblade. Follow your heart. Mm. The the whole point was we all we all told him CWFs that will always be there. That thing is once in a lifetime, probably. Yeah, Jack just pointed out it's um, May Your Heart Be Your Guiding Key. Oh, no, that's so sweet. Yeah, that's that's nice. I, I don't by the way, I don't know what the fuck happened, but like in the course of maybe a year I became a Kingdom Hearts weirdo. Which I did <laughs> I barely played it as a teen and then suddenly I'm twenty seven years old. Uh Kingdom Hearts three is coming out, Jack's just like Hey, I'm gonna play Kingdom Hearts. You should watch. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah. And now suddenly, Aqua is my mom. Hey, that's how I got uh, Jill into Yakuza. I'm like, hey, what? Zero, yeah. here, Zero's up. Why don't you come and watch? Um, but Daniel knew he couldn't make it. Fortunately, before Fanami, so nobody really knows who's in the Skeletor outfit. So Daniel handpicked Ryan because Ryan matches Daniel the most physically. And he left the Skeletor outfit. So while Daniel was in Los Angeles listening to some of the greatest video game musics ever, you know, ever made, Ryan is doing his best to uh, fit himself into the Skeletor outfit, which we all didn't know if he could fit it or not until the day of. Yeah, speaking of, we probably should have had him uh, try it on before then, but yeah, it all worked out. It all worked out. Yeah, oh, look, her car. What? I didn't even know. Lol. Or LOL. How did you not know? How did you know? How did you not know? Trish! Trish! Really? God! You were there. You were literally there. What a oh. rough. Oh, bless. Oh, I love you so much, Trish. Oh, Christ. That was literally, if this was an anime, this is the. <laughs> th- that's the faceplant line. Remember faceplants? 
doesn't happen in modern anime, but it did. No, <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, face falls is what we used to call face them. falls. And the giant sweat drops. Oh yeah, it, it, it would. No, well, no. Nobody no. goes chibi anymore either. Oh well, no, no. See, Trisha would have the sweat drop. We would face fall. Yes. Oh yeah, and she'd like bonk her own head. She's like. Yeah. Ah, I'm so silly. Oh yeah, that 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 little uh, the, the 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 soft palms tap they do while they sc- scratch the back of their head like oh uh, teehee 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 anyway what the fuck were we talking about um the the, the, the about Ryan right skeletor. skeletor yeah so sorry go ahead uh, so in the lead up to the match you know i was uh talking to some of my friends who were in the audience uh, i was actually talking to um uh Devereaux's boyfriend and you know they both you know, love CWF. They'd been in the audience for so many shows, and I, I mean, they are fans of so many different characters. But of course, you know, they were waiting for uh, you know Skeletor because they are big fans. So he was asking me, "Hey, so you know, what matches are coming up next?" And I say, "Okay, well, we got uh, you know Sailor Moon versus Matashita right now. Then we got some more wrestling, and then we got Phoenix Wright versus Mario." And he goes, "Oh, so no Skeletor?" I never said that. <laughs> so, of course, I added it there. Not to, me- uh, not to mention, Ryan, as Tommy Wiseau says, unfortunately, Skeletor cannot make it. And in the world of wrestling, unless someone is actually legitimately injured, when you say someone won't show up, they're going to show up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So and so is the Miz is barred at ringside. You're just saying the Miz will be at ringside. Oh, uh, Daniel in the chat says. Heck, even I didn't know exactly how Skeletor was going to be involved, which is like, yeah. (laughs) So, in the middle of the match, Skeletor's theme song drops, which is bad to the bone, and the moment that song hits, uh, a great bit of continuity in the CWS, the fans know, like, oh my god, it's Skeletor, which I'm always impressed by, because... A lot of the wrestlers, when they pick their theme songs, they pick something that's appropriate to them. Sailor Moon uses the Sailor Moon theme, and uh, Pikachu Libre uses the Pokemon theme. But other wrestlers, when they use something not part of their IP, I'm always impressed when people still associate it with the wrestler. If you see them uh, long enough, you start associating that song with uh, the wrestler. Like, for, for the longest time, Scoot Robertson came out to pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard. And so whenever it comes on the radio, I'm just like, where's Scoot? Where is he? So, that's definitely uh, like an association you just get as a wrestling fan. It's just like you suddenly get all these uh, connections in your head. Yeah, so his thing drops and everybody goes like, oh! and the crowd goes crazy and Jeremy Irish whips him, gets Irish whipped into a chair. What? Yep. Well, and more surprisingly is that when Skeletor leaves... Everybody still focuses on the match, and they, it's like uh, goldfish memory, which, yeah. which, no. which I know Robbie was debunked by the MythBusters. But please let me have this. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's a thing I I was surprised at is like people go fucking rabid for Skeletor, and I don't blame them because Daniel's very talented and he's very funny as Skeletor, but like. He got in, he did his stuff, he failed at doing the thing he was maybe intending to do. Not Typical like, Skeletor you know, like, fashion, in, just saying. In, in storyline, he was trying to get Mario to, uh, to get a leg up on this match, but and it, it ended up backfiring, so he says, away, and then leaves. And the only thing mi- Daniel says, filed again. The, the the only thing that's missing is, is if uh, Skeletor went to the ca- the hard cam, grabbed his collar, and went, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you know that you know that collar pull, yeah. like <laughs> the Rodney and Dangerfield. Then, and then the match continued, and everyone just accepted, like, okay, Skeletor is done with his thing. Let's let's move on. Yeah, and that wasn't the only run in. We had Lashada Decree doing interference for. That's right. Yes, uh, Lashada got to Lashada played heel. You know that she's heel because she was friends with Maddie Sheeta, and Maddie Sheeta doesn't have friends. True, True. but oh yeah, uh, Kaido writes uh, one of Mario's lines. I'm gonna find that skull and kick him in the pelvis. That was Mario. <laughs> Mario said that right when he was being dragged off. Uh, 
It was overall, it was a great match, constant action, very easy to follow. I, I had a hard time watching it just because I was in the back and I don't, I, I wear glasses and I didn't have glasses. But uh, let's go ahead and I got to ask, did you two watch Sailor Moon versus Matt Ishida? Oh, of course. So yeah, I was I was at the uh, the t-shirt table for with, that one. Without, I mean, I could talk about, what did you, your overall impressions of it was? I mean, I enjoyed it. It was a, it was a good regular CWF, you know, smack talking match. Uh, you both got some really good lines in there, some really good hits. Uh, G, when you talk about how, you know, she kept having uh, having her friends die, that was really good. And I loved how Sailor Moon was framing it as, you know, I don't mind fighting you, but if you want to do this, you have to do it the right way instead of, you know, just uh, saying that you get to do this. Yeah, so. Good. It was a lot of good back and forth. Yeah, this was a th this again. I think there's a reoccurring pattern here, Rachel. This also was a match that was set up in advance because it was uh, it was it happened at Fanime. Mm. I mean, with the video call out. Oh God, so much long term storytelling here. Jeez, hmm, it's like we're a real wrestling show. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, uh, Kaito Ida says, "Is she still a heel?" Inquiring minds want to know. Uh, I think Lashida is whoever she needs to be in yeah, any given show. Lashida, we we have talked to this at length in the chat. Lash, if this was Dungeons and Dragons, Lashida is true neutral. Lashida is not shackled by morality. Yep, she's Lashida whatever is she needs to be. So she's always been here. Oh, Jack says that Lashida has been corporate, so she's always been a heel. We just didn't notice. That's right. Lashada just follows the buck and her whims. It's true. It's true. Um, and Daniel says, expect some Fallout promos in the coming week, CWF Universe. Ooh, buddy. Menacing sound effect. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I, am, I, I was very happy I got to work with Ellie. When we were talking about fixed matches, Ellie and I came to the same decisions. Like, okay, if Sailor Moon is going to fight, we wanted we wanted to make sure she retained. It's like who? And she's all, "Can I fight Matashita?" I was like, "You're fighting Matashita because if if there's anybody you could get a guarantee win off of, it's Matashita." And I'm proud of that fact. Damn it! I'm so proud of that. I'm so proud that everybody universally hates me. Which is, which is, you know, kind of, uh, if a therapist heard me on that, the, they would think I have some weird self-esteem issues. <laughs> As if all of us don't have weird self-esteem issues. I mean, if we didn't, we wouldn't be what cosplay. Is what is self-esteem? Um, I don't know. I think, uh, so according to um, boomers, it's a thing they invented so that we'd all get participation trophies even though i'll point out we have participation trophies because the parents living vicariously through their children demanded that their kid get a trophy i'm just saying hey yeah we knew participation trophies didn't mean jack you know if no we offense, if we went to a therapy session with a top hat and gears blasted on it i could say i'm trying to find self-esteem punk I thought that was I thought that was good. God damn it. Go sit Stop in the corner wrong. and think about what you've done. <laughs> getting booed in the chat too. I oh I'm I'm getting wow, everyone hates me even even when I'm out of character, just thanks, guys. Thanks. It's a talent of yours, I suppose. It's it's I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that that match also had some physical elements because uh, we we had a full segment with me uh, ramming Sailor Moon into the turnbuckle, uh, choking her, and then I get shoved and I eat a clothesline where I take a flat back bump. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which Ellie. Delivered beautifully. Allie's also been training. 
in pro wrestling. So, you know, props to her. Uh, she's still training now. Uh, she's been every week. She posts a new progress update about how far she's come along and she's making some great progress. And I know this because I didn't get hurt by her. And in the world of wrestling, that is all you need. Um, sorry, go ahead. I, I uh, had a point and then it left me. Oh, uh, no. It, but really, you know, it, our match was the polar opposite of yours, where, you know, yours was meticulously planned, as it should be. While ours was like, okay, hey, wh- what do you want to get out? Okay, I'll get this out. And we. Ellie really wanted to talk about the the storyline was about who deserves what and deserving opportunity. And, you know, it's it's about, you know, Matt, you know, Matt cuts in line. Sailor Moon says, hey, you don't deserve this. But then Matt goes, oh, yeah, you're the one to talk. And we didn't plan for that storyline to come out, but it did. And what was really impressive was just how universal the crowd was behind sailor moon yeah um the sack anime crowd is not necessarily like just people who are there to see cwf because we're with spw a lot of them are just like yeah we're here to see spw um and then there's some overlap between them but um you know there's a tendency in uh, pretty much any indie wrestling show is like a, a there's people who want to cheer the heels and boo the faces um and like and it, even we got that in our match we had a little dueling chant of like people chanting for giovanni and then people chanting for pikachu libre in response but giovanni's pretty cool i mean uh, D- uh robbie's pretty cool you know like oh, he's shucks. got a great presence he he knows he's like uh let me just say robbie i think that was some of your best work just the the speech you gave real real good i i yeah robbie you you have a a really good heel streak in you yeah you do it's because you're so nice in real life yeah that the best heels come from people who are play really good faces all right so two things first if that was some of my my best work it's only because i had you there to you know, go up against. Oh, you. Oh, shoot. You. No. 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 Secondly, <laughs> None of us can take I, a compliment. <laughs> I, I do kind of love being a heel every now and then. Because, yeah, I, I try to be a nice guy in real life. You know, I want to make people happy. And yeah, I've done a lot of face characters. I mean, Moomin Rider is the babiest face of baby faces. But, uh, yeah, when I can actually... Be nasty and talk smack and embrace the booze every now and then. Yeah, I enjoy that. Maybe a uh-huh. little too much. Oh, no, like you can never enjoy it too much. Um, I, I spend most of my time as a face in CWF and just getting to be Heather is real fun because I get to yell whatever I want and then... I, I also had to. S- s- some of my friends came to CWF at Fanime that, and they'd never been there before, to CWF. And so I'm just like, listen, I know that like you're gonna want to cheer when you see me because I'm your friend. But if I'm doing a good job, you are gonna boo me. Please boo me if I'm doing a good job. Oh, is this this was with the Kraken Con show, right? Oh no, that was um that was Fanime. Oh oh wait, Heather, duh, Heather. Yeah, Heather. Heather. Uh, yes. Kraken Con was another kettle of fish entirely. Yeah. Um, and I thrive off your booze. Yeah, I. It, it really goes without saying because when when you get when you're a face, you get to highlight all the aspects of yourself that you like, that you feel good about, right? You know, it's it's like makeup where you accents what's there and you make it more pronounced. While as heel, you just get to unload all your baggage. Yeah, that was like 90% of my first Giovanni pro- Like You get to talk how you really would like to talk without the veil of... Uh, of uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to... Respectability around you. Yeah, and also, you know, when you're a face, you have to sometimes fight to make sure people know that, you know, they should like you. You have to, you know... Do everything you can to reach out to them and you know agree with what's going on make the audience get on your side when you're a heel it's just like 
I don't care about you guys. Fuck off. <laughs> There's definitely something freeing about being uh, a heel that does not give two shits about what the audience thinks. It's it's like basically unloading on a a, a punching bag. It's You're cathartic. Like, it's very it's cathartic. cathartic, and I'm not actually. I'm, I'm, you know, it, when if you're doing it right, you're not actually hurting anybody legitimately. Um, and that that could go into an entirely other conversation, but I feel like the best heel work, um, makes you feel good later because you booed them. There is, you know, as as Jack would talk about, there is justice that was achieved or denied. And you go home and you don't have to think about it anymore. Like, it doesn't affect your everyday life. Um, that's that's what I think good heel work is, personally. Oh yeah, definitely. There's, there's also just the rare chance where you get to just revel in negative feelings a little bit. And... It's almost like an exorcism. Yeah. Like I said, cathartic. It's, it's, cathartic. it's very cathartic. But, um, I, I mean, it's very obvious that I take a lot of pride in playing Maddie Sheeta the way I do. Uh, I really, when I made, when we created the character, we wanted conceptually f to have a person in the roster who could keep losing infinitely. But even when he keeps losing, you still hate him. Because eventually, when someone keeps losing, you either feel sympathetic for them or you don't take them seriously, and thus you hate them less. We didn't want it. We didn't want that to happen with this guy, and he's just like through time, he's kind of been the the symbol of hatred in the CWF in the in the lower divisions. Like everyone hates him. <laughs> yeah. For good reason. Yeah, for good reason. F that guy. Speaking of, I got to buy a t-shirt in character. Uh, yeah, that was really... That was interesting <laughs> to witness. Um, because, you know, after the show is over, sometimes we're still in character, sometimes we're not. It sort of depends on, like, what's happening. But you threw down a 20 for Ellie's new... Sailor Moon t-shirts, which, Fan by the way... Look fantastic! Wonderful, beautiful design, and it's purple with pink, and it's just, it's... It's girly, but accessible, and just just a really great combination of colors. And the fabric oh. is really comfy. Oh, it's real comfy. It's real I comfy. I bought one for myself, one for my girlfriend. There you go. Um, anyway, so, uh... And then Sailor Moon says... Are you paying for one of my t-shirts right now? And then I'm just like, oh. And you just had this expression on your face. I was just like, you got me. You got but I'm not going to admit that you got me. I'm just going to let this 20 do the talking. I was also selling my ribs the entire time. Yeah, that's true. Because, <laughs> you know, Matt got hit by a magically infused clothesline. He's not going to, he's not going to, like, no sell it. Well, that was my philosophy. But yeah, that 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 was my thing. That was my take. Glad glad to hear your opinions on it, too. There's a lot of extra content in CWF that occurs not on the stage or not during the shows, or even during the con, or even during the con. Yeah. Um. And I, real quick, um, at Fanamania. We wanted to have a reason that Dick Gumshoe would not go up and save Inko Midoriya from getting attacked by Francisca Von Karma. Um, and so we, we come up with a plan. Uh, Ian was a part of this. Uh, CM Puff was a part of this. Um, we thought, all right, let's have Heather break out of custody for a minute or so. And so I... Like, as soon as it started going down, I, like, pretend elbow Jack in, in the neck or whatever. I, I put my fake plastic cuffs around their neck. And I'm just like, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Um, and, and, you know, uh, Ian 
uh, broke that up. And I think, Rob- Robbie, you also broke that up, didn't you? I did, yeah. I had no yeah. idea that you had that plan, but I was just like, okay, clearly they're doing something. But uh, Moomin Rider wouldn't sit by and let that happen. So I got to, you know, help Gumbus you out at least a little. Oh, yeah, and CM Puff, uh, Ian says, I held back Sailor Moon and then put Heather back in chains. Yeah, Puff is a hell of a tweener, isn't he? Um, because he held back Sailor Moon from helping and then brought me back to justice. So, Ooh, um, we, we at the CWF... If you're in the back, you get a little bit of extra. Oh, yeah, there was also... Uh, this was years ago when Reality first debuted and everybody hated him. During intermission, Sam would take cups of water and pour them in the trash. This was in the middle of the California drought. This that that dude never broke character. I was sitting next to him the entire time. Uh, but we at the CWF, we really we really believe in. Since we can't fall back on wrestling, we had to make sure that everything at least makes sense internally in our world. Like you know, why doesn't All Might stop Francisca von Karma? Why does Matt Ishida? Uh, why does he get clothesline? Um, how would how does Pikachu Libre, you know, fend off being outnumbered when she when she was taken out the first time? And mm-hmm. and these little puzzles we have to ask ourselves because when somebody asks these questions, you could tell because everybody would have a train of thought, and somebody goes, "Wait, why doesn't this happen?" And then the conversation goes, "Oh shit." Uh. <laughs> Think about that. Um, and I wanted to speak a little bit on physicality in the CWF just real quick. Um, if you're listening to this and you've never been in the CWF, um, physicality is never required of you. It's not even encouraged. It's if that's a thing you want to do in your storyline, you talk about it, you clear it with G and then you try and make it happen as safely as possible. But as uh, sorry, as safely, I am a huge stickler for safety. Yes, no, um, before Jack and I did the uh, attack of Heather on Dick, we had to uh, we had to submit a video of, like, this is what's going to happen, this is what it looks like. Hey, Jack, are you okay? Uh, actually, I'm fine. Um, just to make sure that, like, we can attempt this safely in a way that will work with the audience. Yeah, we're not trained wrestlers or even well, stage... most of us are not trained wrestlers. Most of us, most of us aren't trained wrestlers or even... relevantly trained in stage combat and you know something as small as the act of grabbing someone's hand forcefully can lead to bad things happening and you know we want to make sure we're all okay because our strength isn't in us doing crazy physical stuff our strength is working characters yeah we we tell stories and there are there are so many ways to get around uh, storylines without doing anything necessarily physical. And I just want, I want people to know that, like, don't think that you can't do well in CWF if you don't want to do physical stuff. Sack anime is a very special exception because of the ring, and we utilize the ring to its advantage, but most of the time, you, if you could hold a microphone and you could talk, you could perform. Exactly. Yeah, really, that last Sack anime show was the most physical any of our shows have gotten. Yeah, uh, from the the uh, percentage of segments to physical activity, that's definitely uh, definitely the most. Because I think in every CWF act we did at that show, at least someone was you know getting thrown or taking a bump. Um, Mark fell, you fell, I fell. Uh, and then there was Ellie, Mario Phoenix, right? Mario Phoenix. Ellie hit the turnbuckle. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, from an accessibility standpoint, I I want people to know that, like, if you can't do physical stuff, like, you don't have to. And there are so many promos that were killer. Like, they created the biggest pops, and they had no physical activity whatsoever. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, it's... we, We accept all ability levels and uh what whatever you want to do like you could probably make it work without uh physical activity as long as you're honest to yourself as long as you're honest with yourself honest with us and safe yes love of god be safe 
Yes. Uh, this, I think this is an important point to address. Uh, was surprised to get in the podcast, but I welcome it. Uh, just because we, we, we get a lot of questions like that. Like, hey, I don't know how to wrestle or uh, I've never, I'm not a physically active person. Can I still join you? And we really wanted to say that out in the ether because since our material is all mostly in kayfabe, we, uh, we don't have many opportunities to, to say this out loud and sincerely that you you know, as Rachel said, you don't need to do a lot physically. Yeah. Um, and again, that's like one thing that is difficult about Sack Anime is that it's not as accessible as our other shows. You, you can't ramp a ring. And so if somebody happened to use a wheelchair and wanted to participate, like it wouldn't, like, we would have to come up with something to get around that. Because you can't put a ramp up to a ring. It just wouldn't work. <laughs> that also requires taking down the ropes, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, it would be a problem, is what I'm saying. It is. And, uh, yeah, that was a conversation we we're talking about. Like, wrestling is, I mean, by its nature, it's, it's very difficult for those that are not, uh, What's the right term to use? Um, able-bodied. Thank you. I, I, I That was in my brain. I didn't know. Yeah, if you're not able-bodied. I mean, there are there are wrestlers, like uh, Zach Gowan wrestled, wrestles with one leg, and there was a... a Hip-Hop per- Harry. Yeah, Hip-Hop Harry. But they still have enough mobility to get in and out of the ring. Yeah, um... And I want to point out, uh, my co-host at SPW, Gary Supreme, is also a wheelchair user, cannot get in and out of the ring. Um, so, like, there's a lot of things I just don't think about because I walk and I can get in and out of the ring. And so, like, I am constantly, like, talking with him, making sure it's just like, okay, so we can do this and this. Um Just to make sure that he's able to get in all of his stuff properly. Um, because I don't want it to be, like, I don't want to prevent him from doing things just because he's in a wheelchair, you know? The, um, and I'm happy to do it. Like, I'll point that out. Um, I want him to be my co-host as in as equal a manner as possible. So, like, no matter what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna accommodate whatever he needs and like even even beyond that you know yeah uh man this is this conversation took a different turn but i'm i'm happy it's, important stuff. Yeah, it's very important stuff i mean at the end of the day we are an anime panel and inclusivity is definitely important to i i'd say all of us mm-hmm um, that's another quick thing I wanted to say. Like, I, I'm super glad that we've started saying at the beginning of our shows, like, no hate speech. Not for our competitors and not for the audience. Because um, that has always been our internal policy. Because if you use hate speech in CWF, you don't... You don't come back. Speech. You don't come yeah. back. Um, and so day I'm one. Kidding. Day one, I put no hate speech. Exactly. Every single time that I've participated in CWF, no hate speech is first and foremost the the biggest rule. Um, And I think extending that to our audience is important. I I think wrestling shows should have like a code of conduct for their fans um, just to make sure that everybody feels safe and protected. Um, Because I know we're throwing each other around, but like the fans should not feel in danger. Yeah. Now that doesn't. When we say no hate speech, that doesn't mean you can't be impolite. You you could be. You could act like a jerk. You could be impolite. You could boo the faces. You could tell people they suck. That's wrestling. But you don't. There's a line you don't cross. And that's that's kind of what I was getting on before. Is just like the good heel work doesn't make you feel bad after you've left the wrestling show. Yeah, you know, if I go up there and I'm being Giovanni and people are shouting, 
boo, you suck, you're evil, we hate you. It's like, good, you know, feed me that hatred. They start shouting out, you know, Team Rocket sucks, Jesse and James suck. Good, in character hatred. But then if someone was, I mean... Boo, Robbie, your, your writing stinks! <laughs> yeah. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie, you can't make a D&D &D character to save your life! Boo! You won't say that to my face, you son of a bitch! <laughs> 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 ooh, ooh, I cut a little deep there. Yeah, but no, like... No, it, no, it's it, good. Once once you start using slurs, it's just like everyone feels icky afterwards. Yeah, slurs are bringing in the yeah, actual person. Yeah, or bringing in the actual person. Kayfabe. Yeah. Kayfabe is important. Kayfabe is a shield. It's great. It gives us this whole new realm of stuff to make fun of someone. I don't need to make fun of Eddie. Ellie can, I can make fun of Sailor Moon. And it's great. Ellie doesn't get hurt. Sailor Moon does. And Sailor Moon's not real. Unfortunately. Damn, oh, my heart. we really need her in this day and age. I know, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like for a uh, kind of example, I guess. You no, know, so I make you know no uh, lies about this. My hair is definitely thinning, and you know that is especially evident when I'm up there as Giovanni, and I got my hair slicked back. So I figured there was a chance someone was gonna call that out, and one person did, and that is you know not. Attacking me as a person or my cosplay. It's just, you know, there out something that yeah, it's there and It was just one person shouting. Where's your hairline? So it didn't catch on but I was prepared if it did you now I was ready to say something like Pokemon came out 20 years ago. Some of us grew up <laughs> <laughs> That's for that's good. That's good actually. That's good that's Um, And you know, I've been apparently someone in a crowd once like called me fat or whatever um, and it got shut down pretty quick because Isaac is usually quick to be like, you cut that shit out or you leave. Shout out um, to Isaac, who's been keeping us safe physically and emotionally for a long time. Yeah, he just oh, like, uh, yeah. physically he, puts himself between people and our performers. He is, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, our, he's our papa bear. Yeah. All the love to Isaac. Mm -hmm. um, but like, and I didn't hear it at the time. Um, but if I ever did hear it, I've always got the uh, I'm shaped like a friend, bitch line that i could use because guess what round is a shape and it's beautiful this is true that's the best shape to hug that's what i'm fucking saying i give great hugs not not to say all shapes don't get hugged yes no ah <sighs> man who here in bro uh bro boots <laughs> who here enjoys chanting yes uh, chanting oh, that's yeah. my friend that's my friend James. Hi, hi, James. How's oh, God. <laughs> next. <laughs> oh, hey, when James. Is the next CWFG? We're, when... we're coming down to the end of the. Ah, uh, yes. Let's go ahead and do that. We are coming down to the end, and I just closed my Patreon tab. I don't know why I what did that. You... I am such an idiot. Uh, well. No, no. You you had a brain cloud. It's okay. CWF is very busy. Uh, we have a number of shows. Could you believe that we only had three in a year? I mean that that that's what it used to be. Three. It used to, it used to be three. Uh, three. It used to be three, and now we have a show coming up in well, Anime Expo. Anime Expo. Anime Expo, the big one, the big reset show. Anime Expo. Uh, we're s waiting to be put on the schedule but we actually do have a time list and that is as i subtly look into my google calendar i am i'm bad with dates anyone here bad with dates oh i'm bad with everything 6 30 on what 6 30 p.m jw room thursday july 4th the most patriotic cwf ever actually the most patriotic cwf date <laughs> yes, Daniel writes the mighty Skeletor will defend the belt. Yeah, which yeah 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 say yeah yeah. So Skeletor will be defending the belt at uh, Anime Expo. It is going to be uh, for the first time in a long time. The CWF is moving out of its small room. So if you're listening to this podcast, please come. Please bring your friends. I know it's day one. 
but we need all the bodies in there because it, it will make for a better show and it will make AX want us to come back. Fill that room. Now, this episode also gets some Patreon shoutouts. Woo! Can I get a woo from yeah. here? Woo! Thank yeah. you, patrons. Clap, 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 clap. Yes. For those who don't know, Cosplay Wrestling Federation has a Patreon. And we have uh, several, I could say that because the number is more than seven, several generous people donating, our, donating money to us. At the $5 mark or more, your name gets a special shout out at the end of our podcast. Well, toward the end. So let me get our list of patrons. I had it before. Yep. Uh, benefit. And I'll, I'll point out while you're doing that. Uh, Thank you. Like, we have the Patreon not like for profits or anything. We just want to keep doing the thing that we're doing um, by giving us a little bit of your extra scratch. You can help us keep uh, our websites running. Um, you can help us get to more cons and just make sure that our upkeep is yeah uh i don't want to go into the specifics of how much it costs but a lot of the c well first off all the competitors are paying out of pocket just to go to the cons but a lot of the maintenance of the cwf paying for paying for merchandise paying for production uh webs uh domain hosting Pay, paying for copyright and trademark i've paid for that out of pocket now this is not a sob story like this is like these are all essential purposes but while i'm not doing this to be rich i'm trying to do this to be less broke <laughs> just we're, we're just trying to keep doing it yeah just try to keep doing it without, without starving and the patreon money has gone a long way to just keeping the general stuff up which goes a long way. So, for, for our patrons who've made this all possible, I'd like to give a shout out to Heather Ray, Jimmy Mai. Jimmy Mai was one of the people who proposed at the Sakura Con show. Uh, Kaito, oh, Ian, I see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. Randon Gerns and Richard Cabling, thank you. For that's right, $5 or more, we will read your name out at the backstage pass. And for $10 or more, we will re read your name out for our, during a show. Big ups to all our patrons. Thank you. Yay! Thank you guys so much. You help us uh, make the, all this possible. As Oh, yes, Daniel. Uh, that's right. The polls for the coals. Now, let's also talk about another special show coming up. A show so special that we had a miniature discussion in the chat about two hours ago. What to name it. Mm -hmm. See, very exciting, though. Very exciting. Uh, we're, we are going to North Carolina. In a con that's <clears throat> in the Queen City. Indeed it is. Yes. Uh, Queen City Anime Con has been very generous to our team, and they are flying four of our members out to Queen City, uh, to North Carolina. Fly paying for our tickets. Whoa. Wah, woo. Crazy. Crazy. So myself and three other members of the team will be will help launch a North Carolina show. And that show come on up. I really need another monitor. <laughs> I only have one. I've been doing this with one monitor this whole time. Yes. Uh CWF Royal City Rampage. As the name was created by Bryce with direction provided by Rachel. Will be on Sunday, August eleventh from 12 p.m. to I think it's either going to be 1 or 1.30. So this is going to be great. It's a our whenever we go into new cons for this stuff, it's always a it's always a dice roll and it's it's an exciting dice roll. It's nerve-wracking and scary, but that's the challenge. It's a midday show. It's a midday it's it's a, it's a midday show. Very. We don't usually get midday shows for like entire weekend cons usually that's just for the uh one day cons. i'm okay like mi i am okay with midday shows because that means we have a lot less pressure on us oh yeah i suppose mm -hmm. but yeah uh that concludes this episode before i ask the question for next one uh rachel is there anything you want to plug at the end 
Uh, I I just have Twitter. <laughs> um, if you want to follow what I do for wrestling shows, uh, go ahead and follow Rachel underscore Guts on Twitter. Um, if you want to follow Pikachu Libre, follow at Pikachu Libre CWF and at Heather Mason CWF. Um, and if you just want to follow my personal Twitter, that's at Not Your Guts. All right. And Robbie, anything you want to plug? Uh, so I've got a Twitter account for Moomin Rider. That is at Moomin Rider CWF. Uh, if you want to follow my personal Twitter account, um, search for Ryoga Rocket. That's typically the online name that I use. Uh, that's also my Facebook page, so uh, cosplay page, so you can find that on Facebook. Um, aside from that, I just want to give a shout out to everyone who's listening, and thank you all for being here and for your support. Yes. And... Now, thank you, G, for having me on again. Of course. Oh, yes, that too. Uh, yeah, thank you. This was a special SAC anime episode. I, I really like talking about cons because I feel like not enough... There's not enough podcasts that just talk about cons from the ground level. So... Yeah. Now, with that said, the next question for next episode, and unfortunately... I'm sorry, Rachel and Ravi, you won't be on... I mean, you might not be on to answer this. Because I think it's a doozy. Okay. If you were to wrestle, describe your in-ring psychology. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> see, I've played worldwide wrestling RPG, so I've already got this. I got this. I'll just talk about it in the chat <laughs> next time. That's right. To repeat, if you were to wrestle, describe... Like, assuming... That you know, you're in your ideal physical shape, so you could do whatever you want to do, minus like triple backflip somersaults off the turf, you know, stuff that's humanly possible in the ring. What would your wrestle? I know it's humanly possible. Oh hush. What would your ring psychology be? Anyway, that concludes our episode. Thank you for joining us for this hour and a half. It was a delightful opportunity, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for having us. See you later. Bye, everybody. See you later, CWF Universe. Love you. Bye. Eh.